so on this hot night when we have a very small group. <laughs> um, and uh, feel free to make noise. So it sounds like we have lots of people here. Um, tonight I want to talk about fear. Um, I don't know if you saw uh, this week, uh, last Friday, the guy who walked across Niagara Falls. Yeah. And there he was walking across Niagara Falls, and he was a little upset because he had to have a tether uh, to, to, to be tied on because he wanted to walk all the way across by himself. Um, I, a couple years ago, went to a Word of Life camp for a retreat with Tom, and they had a climbing wall, and I got up about this high. And they said, oh, you can keep going. I'm like, no, I want to come down. No, you can do it. I said, no, I want to come down. And Tom said, well, you did pretty good for your age, which was, which was, uh, which was nice. So, uh, <clears throat> but fear, fear is something which we confront, and fear is something which sort of changes our lives and controls our lives. Um, we don't think of it that way, but one of the reasons we, we do things is because we are afraid. We're afraid that if we don't work, we're not going to have food to eat. We're afraid that if we don't do the right things, have our house look the right way, people are going to say things about us. We're afraid we're going to be rejected. We're afraid of being hurt. Uh, we're afraid of being hungry. We're afraid of dying. Not just when you're walking across that tightrope across Niagara Falls. It's just a natural fear uh, that we have. So the disciples are out on the boat with Jesus, and Jesus is the one that suggests, let's go over to the other side. It's Jesus' plan, uh, and, and Jesus is obviously, he's directed this. He said, we're going to do that. And so he gets on the boat and with the disciples, and all of a sudden up comes this storm. And the disciples are out there trying to get the boat to go, and the water is not just, it's not just a bad storm, the water is coming in, it said it's swamping in the boat. The water is coming in to fill up the boat with water. And this is something to be afraid of. People in small little boats on seas, on you know, lakes, drown, right? I mean, this is something which happens. Uh, we have it at Night of Lake every year. People are out on the boats, they drown. So is it unusual or strange that they're afraid? No, it's not, a, not unusual. And yet, in the midst of all that, Jesus is sound asleep with his head on the pillow. He's got his head right in the front of the boat, sound asleep. Wake up! Wake up, teacher, they say to him. You know, don't you care that we're going to die? Very interesting question. Don't you care that we're going to die? You start to ask yourself, well, what were they expecting Jesus to do? Were they expecting him to... They weren't able to do anything. Though there's this wind and, and you know coming at them. They can't do anything about the wind. The water is coming in. They can't do anything about the water. All they're doing is panicking, right? And what was what did they want Jesus to do? They wanted him to intervene somehow. Doesn't really say. And sometimes that's the way we are. We want Jesus or God to intervene in our lives. We have those storms come at us, and we have all those problems that come at us, and we want to have God help us. And when we don't feel like we're being helped, we say, God, don't you care about me? Don't you care? And Jesus says, where's your faith? Be still, be quiet. You ever tried doing that in a storm and the boat's coming at you? What water's coming you say, be still, be quiet? I don't know how well that would get you. But that's what he does. Um, and even after that, they are afraid. They're terrified, saying, who is this man? They're still afraid. The water is calm. The wind is calm. They're still afraid. Old Testament lesson uh, for this night, which we didn't read tonight, but we're going to read on Sunday, story of David and Goliath. Right? Little David gets his, sling, his, his stones, and says, hey, I can go and take on this giant. And uh, I can win the battle for Israel. Doesn't sound like the brightest move in the world. A little kid out there with a couple of stones up against a seasoned warrior. He's not the smartest, maybe. He's not 
but, but what he has is he has, he has faith in God, which is an important thing. He, he gives all the, the glory to God. He says, I was able to, through God's power, I was able to kill bears. But with God's power, I was able to kill lions. And the thing he lacks most is fear. He is fearless. He has no fear. Is it that something couldn't happen to him? No, but he goes into there without fear. And that's what happens with Paul in, in Corinthians. They are fearless. They're not afraid of what can happen to them. And in fact, he says, we've been beaten, we've, been, we've uh, you know, endured sleepless nights, uh, we've been hungry, we've, uh, they try to kill us, we've been imprisoned. All of the things which you might be afraid of happening to you happen, and yet what they are, they rejoice. Why? Because they say in having nothing, they have everything. When they have nothing to worry about, they have everything. When they, they don't worry that someone's going to say something about them. They're not worried that someone is going to, uh, they're not going to have enough food. They're not worried about any of that stuff. Not that those things might not happen to them, but they are they're fearless. They're, their fear has gone from their lives. The angels at the beginning of the, the gospel, beginning and the end, say what? They say, don't be afraid, right? Don't be afraid because I have tidings of great joy, right? And at the end of the, of the gospel, they say, don't be afraid, he is risen. Don't be afraid. God doesn't want us to go through life being afraid. If you trust in God, it may not be that all of the perfect things happen to you in your life, but when you take away that element of fear, you're able to lead a totally different life. If you don't care what people say about you, you can feel free to speak your mind. If you don't care if, if someone's going to kill you, you can be fearless. You can stand up for things. Uh, Suu Kyi, the, the activist in Burma, who is now doing a, a a tour of Europe and picked up her Nobel Prize after being in jail and under house arrest for years. One of the highlights of her career is where the government was there with their guns pointed at her saying, you know, if you guys don't stop your demonstration, we will shoot you all. And she got up and she walked right through the middle of them. Could she have been shot? Could the story have ended differently? Absolutely. But the point was she had no fear. If that man was going across on that tightrope and had fear, I don't care how skilled he is, I don't care how much he practiced, if he had fear that he wasn't going to make it, he would not make it. He would come, he would come right off of that. So that's what God wants. He doesn't want you to be afraid. He doesn't want you to be afraid of what could happen. Because you know what? It's going to happen. Lord, don't you see we're dying? Well, yes, we're all dying. That's part of life. And yet we try to avoid that at all costs. And by doing that, we compromise ourselves. We compromise what we stand for. We compromise the jobs we take. We compromise how we deal with other people. Because we're afraid. Because we are afraid. God wants you to get rid of that fear. Take the fear out of your life. And live a joyful life. Having nothing. Worrying about nothing. By doing that, you have everything. Jesus says, here I am when the, when, the, when the police come to arrest him, when the soldiers come to arrest him. What happens to Jesus? He is crucified on a cross in a brutal way. He's beaten. Horrible stuff happens to him. There's no fear. because Why? Because he trusts in God. God has said, like he said to the disciples, I'm going go to go over to the other side. God is in control. David felt felt empowered. He's not going not gonna to be afraid. That's what God wants us to be in the little things which we go through. You know, the giants which we have to confront. The storms which we have to confront. He's there for us. and says, don't be afraid. And that's our good news. Thank you.